So hi colleagues, um, today Dean and I would like to share um, a research project we've been working on at a South African higher education institution. So the project is entitled Recipients Reception of Equity Agenda Programs in a Rapidly Transforming Higher Education uh, Context. The past two decades, uh, South African higher education has been characterized by concerns with equity and access. Uh, this has been focused structurally in terms of numerical access, um, in particular enabling the representation of different demographics and culturally with epistemological access in the disciplines to do with access to disciplinary ways of knowing and academic discourses to enable success. This presentation um, particularly reports on the findings of a research project which contributes to studies on the complexity of relational and interactional diversity that have emerged once minimum expectations of standards of numeric access were met at an historically white university. I'm Gladman, Tom Gladman. I'm Dina Beluigi. And although we could not both present this in person at the Higher Education Teaching and Learning Conference in Paisley, Scotland, but we thought it would be um, useful to make this recording uh, of our presentation together. It was an overview of our recent study which focused on the reception of participants of a carefully crafted and well-informed accelerated development programs which over the past 15 years sought to offer and These programs have for the most part been successful with many of the participants performing well according to the criteria in which they were assessed uh, which included performance in terms of research output evidence of good teaching practice, and often um, an aspect of community engagement, administration, or leadership. Our role was not to ascertain the quality of the program, but rather through the experiences and perceptions of the recipients, more fundamental issues. Related to uh, diversity and complexities around the experiences of this program by participants. So in terms of our participants, uh, I think there have been about 53, uh, according to the official figures, participants of this program since its inception in the year 2000. Supported mostly by funders outside of the country. Uh, out of this 53, 13 were unavailable for contact. Uh, in fact, we couldn't find any contactable uh, emails or telephone numbers. Um, 10 of these respondents or rather participants joined the program in the year of the research. And after consultation with them, most indicated they felt it was too soon to contribute meaningfully to the research. So effectively, the research covered the participants of the year 2000 up to the end of 2015. So of the 31 possible participants, 27 uh, participated to various degrees. A number of the participants voiced their fatigue and disillusionment with transformation processes at this institution and with research on transformation too, and so chose not to fully participate but rather protect themselves. Those who actively participated did so firstly via a questionnaire, some of them completed online, uh, some in hard copy, uh, some via interviews. Um, in fact, those who were not comfortable uh, filling in uh, an online questionnaire or hard copy, uh, they were kind of fearful of having the road that attracted back to them. So they opted to uh, have a face-to-face -face interview with us. Following on from our analysis of participants' responses to the questionnaire, we made a presentation which attempted to give an overview but then really became more about the underpinnings or influences which we found led us to map tensions between a functionalist ethos within the institution and students and societal expectations of transformation underpinned by conflict theory. We presented this to the participants in small focus groups, which we recorded and added to our analysis. Additional engagement occurred when we presented participants with postcards with the metaphors from the questionnaires on top, inviting them to write messages to imagined readers within the institution. We will do an interview of topics and findings that have emerged from the project, mainly to invite interaction with future research. So please have a look to see where there may be fruitful spaces or topics for, for interchange. Firstly, we looked at theorizing the influences on, intention on the intentionality of equity or redress programs and the significance for the experiences of the recipients. This had to do with stakeholders and pressures and tensions on the institution and these agents over different historical periods. It also had to do with different notions of transformation, such as individual success versus societal redress or 
conservative versus radical approaches, or the interests of the institution versus the interests of the larger communities in which it was situated. A particular finding was the ways in which these tensions positioned the recipients and the differences in the ways they felt that tension. What emerged was that those who most self-identified with the radical ethos felt most negatively impacted by the institutional evaluation processes. And in the main, these were younger men and black women. Those who felt most akin to the conservative institutional ethos and less so with transformation felt most uncomfortable about being positioned as agents of transformation and often uncomfortable as worthy recipients of the benefits. Some of them even described guilt. And these were mostly white, colored or Indian women, older black males or those who rose from within the institution. Secondly, we explored notions of transformation, taking responses from their perspectives as to what was espoused and practiced. Then we looked at whether as recipients of accelerated development programs, they felt that the institutional discourses and practices of inclusion were for access, success or challenge in terms of transformation. Then we looked at the relationship between institutional evaluation processes of their development and performance and transformation within the institution. And lastly, we found that it was important to, to look at how they felt positioned within the institution and the relationship of that positioning to the pol politics of belonging within groups, including the development program, their departments, the institution, or as a person contributing to diversity or transformation. This draws on ideas about group membership and belonging, but also on more critical understandings of the cost of belonging and its relation to transforming institutional cultures. A number of metaphors and discourses emerge from participants' responses to the questionnaire and to the focus group discussions. These were linked to literature on equity, redress and affirmative action in other contexts to see what the experience of these particular participants may help us to learn about the specificity and similarity of this particular transforming higher education context. This short time I look at it to us, it is really only possible to make some pointers to the complexity of these issues and we thought it best is to draw from the narratives and metaphors articulated by our participants. Uh, so regarding transformation, uh, this is one of the you know response that was given by one participant. Um, uh, so well, our respondents had mixed feelings about this. While they feel that the program really prepared them um, for positions within the institution, they also felt that uh, the program was really not you know, open enough for them to really show who they, uh, they are, rather they had to confirm to set ways of doing things for them to kind of suit in an in a existing uh, system. Another participant voice stood quite powerfully in this metaphor, one of the ones that we used in the postcard method, about being positioned within an institution as representing their transformation as a sort of supplement or symbol of that change. The participants felt that they had to kind of exhibit the qualities that the Accelerated Development Program expected them to. In other words, if they did not confirm to these existing uh, qualities, they wouldn't fit in the system. About what one learns through experience in order to survive the different tensions and expectations of those who evaluate performance and those who want substantive structural transformation. This is perhaps the most haunting of metaphors for a program intended to particularly address equity in terms of race and gender. So what it made strongly is that those structures so carefully put in place to either change cultures or make the appearance of changing cultures through the development of select individuals, often do so at the expense of those agents who navigate these tensions. Rather than the presumption of gains for those considered deficit or from deficit communities, there must be a recognition of the costs incurred in the politics of belonging and a reckoning with the material processes and their significance of or particular concern, concern in, in post colonial, -colonial contexts context, where those designated the level of previously disadvantaged and the vast majority, in the, country, majority in the country is that the system needs to be transformed as a whole rather than slashes to assimilate a minority as representative. One could argue that the larger global calls for social, ju social justice 
suggest this is the, the case for most universities, shifting from empowering the elite and maintaining the status quo. Transformation of the society in which the situation is situated. Thank you. We'd like to encourage your feedback and suggestions. But more than this, find spaces for future collaboration around staff or faculty equity in higher education, the relation to evaluation processes and the substantive transformation. Once again, thank you very much.